so good afternoon everybody and uh, this session is not really related to the contents like uh, we are i am not talking technical uh, aspects of um, the website design like uh, how to design a web page technically what are the languages fonts all those things i am talking about making something related to ui that is user interface design which will make the website accessible to everyone including the differently abled or divyang logon ke liye hum kaise websites banayenge and uske liye see accessibility is a right it is a right when you are talking about any public infrastructure that need to be accessible by everyone and if you are thinking of what you say in equity in the sense equal rights to everyone then you should make provisions for such kind of universal accessibility so what is this universal accessibility see even you should not think only for persons with specific disabilities it should be the per, per, it should be for persons with any disability for example even the infrastructure you should have a proper infrastructure so that it is accessible by blind or it is accessible by uh, deaf and deaf or it is accessible by the uh, people who cannot walk people who cannot actually people without hands so he, there are lot in the sense uh, the if you say physically handicapped there are varieties of physically handicapped people who are around us and they should be able to access your infrastructure since your website is an infrastructure or it is a resource or it is Uh, an information that is available on the public domain you cannot take away the rights of such kind of people who can't just read or who can't listen or who can't uh, view due to their disabilities so when you are designing websites it is very much required uh, that you should make your accessible something which is what you say mm, that is called right to accessibility there is a separate act also in that in the supreme court and many other uh, courts have given different acts there is a constitutional amendment also in this regard and uh, there are social department of social justice has uh, moved a lot of constitutional amendments towards making the infrastructure accessible to everyone so in this regard today's talk is more or like a philosophical talk uh, that will take you to some kind of issues that you are supposed to take care as a concern um, okay when you are designing a website let me share the presentation yeah so what do you how do we design our accessibility accessibility we will first check some answers and this is the typical agenda of my talk like what we do what is the web accessibility i talk about these things in repeated uh, this one what is this disability actually this was first coined by americans with uh, some act called disability act americans with the disability act what they have told is a physical or a mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major five activities major life activities what are the major life activities like blindness or low vision deafness or hearing loss limited movement speech disability cognitive limitations which cannot be handled because it is very specific and customized okay and combination of any of these above in the america itself 
60 million Americans are one out of five because at least they have done a good census. Actually, our our census ka data bhi itna theek nahi hai. So what I am trying to take, uh, tell you is, please see, around 50 percent of Americans will have either a disability or a close friend who are low with one disability. Okay. So what do you mean by accessibility? Accessibility means equal access. So the technology must be designed and developed to provide an equal access and usability to every member of your target audience. This is very important. So even if you see in your reservation policy, there is a separate reservation policy for physically handicapped. Okay. Maybe it is less, but it is there. Therefore, the technology used by the people with the disabilities to perform the functions that might otherwise be difficult or impossible. So it, the, it can include something like the conventional items like walkers or wheelchairs, hardware, for example, uh, refreshable braille display, like for the blind people use software, maybe screen reader or speech recognition or peripherals and so on. Okay. So how do we do this is a major issue. Uh, so now we will see there are a lot. I will show you one video. Sorry. This is the home page of the Handbook for Educators and Museums on the Art Beyond Sight website. Listen to how a blind person with the JAW screen reader would experience some of this page. Handbook graphic. Link graphic program in A-Z. Link graphic photo of a teacher and student's hands feeling clay. Graphic step dash by dash step through the entire process. This page link graphic accessibility tools training. This page link graphic photo of hands exploring the tactile drawing of Pablo Picasso's list as Moselle D. Vignan, 1907. Graphic make your programs and facilities accessible. Graphic for educators and museums. This page link graphic disability awareness training. This page link graphic photo of hand signing ABS. Graphic teach staff about disability and inclusion. This page link graphic human resources. This page link graphic photo of hands on the computer. Graphic employment at museums and in the arts. Lang. Our handbook takes you through the process of creating accessible programming for people with visual impairments. Graphic photo of a man reading braille descriptions of a display of Jasper Johns prints accompanied by a young woman at the Museum of Modern Art, New York. So what is this? This was just a reader which used to read the complete website and wherever there was a graphics it used to append uh, append one word not append it used to insert one word called graphics followed by the contents on the graphics similarly if it was a running text like the html tags what it used to do is i will show you a demonstration in the html tags it will take the html tag and convert it into appropriate sign or a meta language which is used for informing. See, for example, when you put a graphics uh, in HTML, it will be only an image. But how do you read the content of the image? So once you read the image, then again you have to start the OCR, that is the uh, content reader, optical content reader. So you have to scan the contents from the image. You have to convert the graphics to a text and read the corresponding text. So it requires certain kind of steps to be followed when you are actually converting uh, the image to text. So there are a lot of such kind of technical interventions are required when you are actually enabling your websites 
to be able to read from the blind okay so let us move further so for this there are lot of what you say in assistive technologies they are called as assistive technologies okay uh, so what do you mean by this assistive technology it is so it is that the augmented input you have something called as an augmented in input or the output devices okay uh, so you have an augmented uh, input or output devices the visual representation of the auditory information for hearing the impaired network based tty systems and the video phones these are some of the examples of some assistive technologies that can be used in conjunction with your web devices sorry web enabled devices okay so how do we actually do this in the sense what i am trying to tell you how do we do this so the way that we actually do this we use an assistive technology like for web accessibility especially the people with disabilities should also be able to use the internet and take the best advantage of the internet today you may see there are a lot of iot enabled devices are actually being prepared for uh, um, these people okay these uh, people and these iot enabled devices are inter are intern connected to what you say the um, this one uh, web so therefore you should perceive understand navigate and interact what is that web accessibility anybody should be able to perceive they should be able to understand they should be able to navigate and they should be able to interact so the encompasses all the disabilities that affect the web, web access so web accessibility will encompasses all the disabilities that will affect the web access so how do you create an inclusive site they are called inclusive two purpose one is branding and a tool for users so the essential to make the websites welcoming and accessible so there should be something called welcoming words so you should be able to tell that to, uh, what is this website about welcoming words then there should be some inclusive photos and images and there should be an advertisement available for accommodations okay so what is this alternative text it is called alt text is the fun principle in web accessibility where the textual alternative to non text content on the web pages what is please please understand whenever there is a non text content like image like a graphics like a video like anything so which cannot be directly read from the reader there should be an alternative text for that the textual alternative to the non text content on the web page this is the first principle so how do you do that you add an html code for example if you have an image that has image dot div so you should uh, have an alternative text you should write what is the uh, information related to this image you should be able to type it it should be accurate equivalent and succinct it should not be a redundant text and number of image it should be given that image of you should not write it it is an image of it is a graphics of like that it should describe it properly so now how do we create an effective alt text this is a very important thing uh, you should find a balance between too much and too little you don't put too much of information and similarly you should not put too little information how the image is used to convey important content to provide visual enhancements which offer no real contents and to link to the other areas so the alternative text communicates the purpose of the graphics 
and it is not it will never communicate its appearance you should not tell this graphics is of this color and many other things that is not required okay similarly there is a you should not uh, have a bad alternative text for example there is a car what do you give you should not write just a car what is a good a good alternative text it is a silver mercedes sports car much better alternative text is a silver mercedes cls 350 sports car you should write about this image okay similarly we should also have some color usage color should never be used to convey the information please some users with the disabilities cannot distinguish the colors it is bad so it may lose the meaning if used in high contrast so therefore please don't use the colors okay to convey the information there are something called timeouts they are employed to track the users in activity for example some issues include they are not identified on screen not enough to complete the activity something like that so you will have some something like your session will expire in so and so then provide descriptive links in the sense the links are most basic elements of html the links links work with all assistive technologies and can be inaccessible this is very important the links can work with all assistive technology but sometimes they will be inaccessible with something okay so therefore it should be descriptive and accessible from the keyword this is very important and there are certain things which are labeled form fields what are they they are called labeled form fields what is that there should be a matching for and id labels see for example you have something like contact id must be unique and can't have one label for multiple things right so therefore text labels must describe the function for each form control right so the element used to associate to text label see i will give you an example we are using online uh, submission for various admission can you tell me how many that uh, such online forms can be really used by the blind or whatever it is it is very difficult okay so how do we do that it is uh, according to me i have not seen any indian including the websites designed by the top uh, iit yens or whatever it is i am not blaming anybody i am hardly seen any indian websites especially when you seek employment and other things including the upsc they don't have any websites or the forms which are designed for blind or physically handicapped if the blind who cannot see how can he apply then for the post that is called for when you are calling the applications online did you okay okay so this is the major problem so there are lot of subtitles and transcripts must be given the equivalent alternatives that they are synchronized and add subtitles and captions for audio and video is also uh, possible so the equivalent alternatives that are synchronized and uh, you should add some subtitles and captions for audio and video so once there are uh, such kind of uh, 
this one you should be able to uh, do this fine similarly the use of keyboard usage access to the user interface is through keyboard and you should not have difficult to reach the areas for example consider testing an assistive technology for example keyboard access accessibility so assume how the keyboard can be accessed the test with the tap key ensure that the visual focus how it is actually done with the this one so therefore actually there are there are certain uh, what you say uh, uh, thermal variations sorry physical and thermal variations in the keyboard to enable even the uh, physically handicapped people to go through that similarly the navigations the main content is not typically located first the long navigation lists are first and among the others so the skip navigation bypasses the top and create a visible or invisible link that jumps or quit so what is the main content it is not typically located the long navigation lists are first among the others we can skip the navigation bypasses the top and we create a visible or invisible link that jumps or this skips so similarly era like wiara which is accessible rich internet application suite helps with the dynamic content and ui controls and some functionality is actually limited to the users of it and era defines new ways to provide access to the assistive technologies and makes advanced web applications usable right so similarly the social media and accessibility and again it is not always most accessible social media is not most accessible very it may vary the image heavily and updating dynamically and web then conducted a screen reader survey in 2012 roughly half found social media sites accessible and one third of them found inaccessible similarly http webm.org/projects/screenreader survey i will just take to that see this is the demographics how many respondent and what is the percentage of responded how many disabilities are reported uh, hope sorry yeah this is the they conducted the screen reader survey and with the different demographics in asia also they have conducted unfortunately only 4.8% they have responded and 93% of the disabled people actually use the screen reader and the proficiency seems to be good okay and uh, similarly what you say the devices used many of them have used more than uh, 80% have used desktop computers operating systems they have done a very good beautiful survey on this okay so again let me go back so many issues but hopefully increase the awareness on web 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 accessibility can fix this so now again i want to tell you how to what is the quality what do you mean by accessibility uh, just uh, to give you an introduction in the sense the quality of being easy to open accessibility means what is the dictionary meaning the quality of being easy to obtain use understand reach or enter 
this is a very important thing so the web accessibility means it is nothing but the inclusive practice of removing the barriers that prevent interaction with or access to our websites by the people with the disabilities so assistive technology means what an any item a piece of equipment or a product system whether acquired commercially off the shelf modified or customized that is used to increase maintain or improve the functional capabilities of individuals with disability so examples is screen readers pointing devices switches alternative keyboards siri amazon they are all siri amazon echo alexa they are all the examples of assistive technology so there are a lot of alternate methods like you have alternate keyboard single button mouse uh, track balls or joysticks head pointing devices pointing or typing guides um, head mice switches or on screen keyboards touch windows i guess there are a lot of such kind of alternate access methods are available and low tech pointing devices can also be included like this people are using like this you please see low tech uh, pointing devices they can be either a head or a chin pointer stylus or adapted hand pointers or mouth sticks many people in abroad use this okay so this sensors will tell you the story about us we are not concerned anyway so in that they have created something called web content accessibility guidelines that is wcag 2.0 so it defines how to make the web content more accessible to people with disabilities accessibility involves a wide range of disabilities including visual auditory physical speech cognitive language learning and neurological disabilities so although these guidelines cover a wide range of issues they are not able to address the needs of the people with all types of degrees com and combinations of disability so these guidelines also make web content more usable by older individuals with changing abilities due to aging and often improve usability for users in general okay so that is the major issue so what is this wcag 2.0 there are four guiding principles so one minute yes. So sorry, uh, one minute. Uh, let me take so the four guiding principles of accessibility in wcag 2.0 is the website should be perceivable operable understandable and robust and there are three levels of conformance a aa and aaa and they are divided into 63 success criteria right what are the spectrum of disabilities that they are actually considering visual auditory physical cognitive and speech visual auditory physical cognitive and speech so what are the visual disability uh, disabilities it may be low vision partial sight poor acuity tunnel vision clouded vision and so on or it can be even color blindedness or blindedness so what are the examples of good practice for visual disabilities images and controls should have equivalent text alternatives text images and page layouts can be resized without losing uh, information 
video content has text or audio alternatives or audio description track text or images have sufficient contrast between the foreground and background color uh, they provide consistent uh, predictable navigations and avoid using color alone to identify the links and the controls fine and there are auditory disabilities hard of hearing or and deafness so therefore what is the examples of good practice for auditory disabilities audio content including video should provide captions of or transcripts media player should provide volume controls and media player should also provide options to adjust the caption text size and the colors and no interactions that rely on using the voice okay and examples of physical disabilities there is an amputation like arthritis fibro uh, uh, fibromyalgia uh, rheumatism muscular dystrophy uh, repetitive stress injury uh, tremors and uh, spasms spasms then quadriplegia so you can find out in the web what are these uh, this one and what are the good practices for dis physical disabilities provide full keyboard support like all links menu items control accessible via keyboards or uh, no keyboard traps provide sufficient type to complete the task provide consistent predictable simple navigation and page functions link the targets button should be of sufficient size similarly what are the examples of cognitive disabilities you should have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder autism spectrum disorder memory impairments multiple sclerosis uh, perceptual or learning disorders seizure disorders and so on so what is the good practice for cognitive disorders they provide simple navigation and page layouts that are easy to understand and use avoid when possible complex sentences that are difficult to read or unusual words avoid moving blinking or flickering content or provide method to disable video animations or audio content can be paused or stopped simple text is supplemented by images graphs or illustrations so accessibility see your site can be compliant but it is inaccessible that is a major issue okay uh so therefore for example why uc berkeley is restricting access to thousands of online video lectures because of uh, its on uh, issues so what is this web accessibility we will see what Yes, sir. Ah, the sir, half an hour class there. Oh, half a phone, madam, to pass. Spelling are important, but if you want to write essays that inspire. Um, when I was 14, I lost my sight, and I just remember I was going like surfing the web, and it was just so much easier. Like I like to get on it so much more, and now it's just so frustrating because you can't see the graphics and like what's going on sometimes, and it's just frustrating. I use the internet connected to school um, subjects quite often, and. I use it for uh, projects and tests, but also one of my most recent projects. The only way I could get it done was to go to google.com. All the other recommended websites were not very accessible. Without captions, it's hard to understand what you're doing. I just have to try and make it up. With captions, I know exactly what's going on. I know the specifics of what they're talking about. 
It's kind of hard to be required to do something and not be able to do it. You have to find somebody else to come and help you do it on my own time. And I can't navigate by myself. And I like to be independent. It gives me a feeling of pride. And it is also slower if somebody needs to help me, which they would. And something that would help out a lot of uh, visually impaired people is just for that person to go the extra step, which isn't much at all, to make the uh, websites accessible so that we're able to do our assignments. I remember when I started in 2009 and became an entrepreneur, I was completely I would say at this point that there probably are more people with visual impairments than there are folks with um, total vision loss. But the things that govern the success of those folks to use a website is the same thing that governs uh, the success of people who are totally blind. So accessibility is a sort of a one-size-fits-all uh, descriptor based on any, any kind of vision loss you may have, whether it's slight or a lot. Um, the program you're going to hear this morning is a program called JAWS. It is a screen reader. And the acronym stands for Job Access with Speech. Job Access with Speech. So the first thing I'm going to do is tell the computer that I want to run the show from the keyboard. By the way, you all are noticing there is no mouse up here. Or maybe there is. But it doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned. Okay? So everything I'm going to do will be from the keyboard. Middle Z. I. Enter. Middle Z Internet Explorer. Connected dot dot dot. Page has five edits of 61 links. Home dash Greenwood site center. It. Home. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to move on to the website where, where we have some issues. Control O. Open dialog. Type the Internet address of the document. Result S. U. P. P. O. R. T. Period. A. S. U. S. Period. C. O. M. Enter. Can you uh, adjust the speed 100%. at this rate, right? Uh, I, I'm leaving it at this rate for a reason. Let me explain why. Okay? Yes, I could slow the speech down so all of you could understand it. But it's not important that you understand it. I was just wondering if you could understand it. Oh, absolutely. This is slow to me. <laughs> I a technique where I can go directly to a link. Links list dialog. Links list view images. And I'm shutting him up again. The double product files, drivers, user manuals, and utilities here. See? Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Okay. There's a whole lot of links there, but I picked the one I wanted. Okay. How? Oh. How? How often do you come to this side? How? I did it. I did it through the use of a keystroke. I, I did two keystrokes, one that said, please alphabetize all the links on a page, and then I pressed the letter D because I knew that the link I wanted started with the letter D. Which Very was, cool. I, I recently purchased an Asus netbook, and it came with XP Home, and about a week and a half ago, they released drivers for Windows 7. And I wanted to be able to go get those drivers for Windows 7. So I went to this website and I went to the place where I'm about to go get to these drivers and you're going to experience the same thing that I did when I tried to do this. You're going to see the parts that worked and you're going to see the parts that didn't. And I'm hoping to be able to show you the, the frustration along the way. <laughs> and by the way, you probably don't know this, but there's actually a keyboard command inside Internet Explorer that would allow you to alphabetize your links too, not that you'd ever need to. It's just a different way of doing business, but it gets us down the road, right? Your vision 
allows you to select the area of the screen you need. This allows me to do it by character. Enter. 100%. Hello. 100%. Hello. All right. Hello. Now we have. I think that's two frames and 52 hit button when user. Shush. Thank you. Wow. All right. Now, now you have a screen that's going to allow me to, to tell it what model uh, of a netbook I have uh, and what operating system I'm using so it can give me drivers. Now, there are controls on this page that are form controls that I need to access to get to these controls. Thus far, all these controls work fine, and I'll show you what I mean. There's a command in JAWS where I, I'm going to press that says, take me to the first form control. And I'm going to continue to hit that command until I get to the, to the form control that I'm looking for. And you're going to say, well, how did you know which one you were looking for? I've been on the site a few times. Okay. And one thing you're going to realize about people who are blind or visually impaired, you develop memories of sites you, you work with often. You have to. If you, if you didn't, you'd be there all day looking for stuff. Uh, other websites where I wanted to download a file, it's all conventional HTML. I can find the links, I can press enter. If there's a download button like the Microsoft site oftentimes has, I can find the button, hit the download, get the file. I'm a happy camper. Here's the other side of the coin. Okay, four. E-W-E-G-G-period-C-O-M One of my favorite sites where I like to spend money. Enter. 2%. 100%. Newing.com, dash computer parts, PC components, laptop computers, digital cameras, and more. 100 new it. Now, listen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a search. Search site edit. Enter. Search site edit. Search site. Type of text. And I'm going to search for netbook. N-E-T-E-O-O-K. Enter. 95%. Newing.com dash network. As a CEPC, MSI win, Insurance by one, HD mini mode, Lenovo ID of NS10, Cloud code, Intel Atom, page has two frames, 28 headings and 197 links. Newing.com dash net network comma. All right. You heard a bunch of noise. And I will tell you something else too. I have credit cards and I have money on those credit cards. And if I go to a website that I can't access, they don't get my money. So let's, I mean, we can talk about the right thing to do, but let's talk about the thing that drives it most of the time. Dollars. And I guess the only other thing I want to say is, if you're thinking about Flash, oh. don't. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's a pain. And now, first, I mean, the folks, the folks at Adobe will tell you that you can have accessible Flash, and there is a website called access.adobe.com. And if you want to read about how to construct Flash that can be accessible, please enjoy. <laughs> but in, in, in my opinion, uh, and I think I'm reflecting the sense of a lot of users, we just assume not have to deal with it if we had a choice. So please see how the people, again, uh, we will go back to our presentation. So a quick look at how to make the website content accessible to our people with disabilities and user, okay? And it is, uh, as, do, as you know, the internet is a place of equality. It can, accessibility will give us a power and choice at the same level if accessible. Uh, for example, the founders of WWW, Berners and Lee, says that the power of web is in its universality. Access by everyone, regardless of disability, it is an, an essential aspect. Okay, and also the Ignatian concept of illusion and supporting the undeserved population okay it is there and also in u.s there is a federal section 508 standards which will impose accessibility law okay and accessibility is not text only in pages and accessibility is not separate accessible versions except in multimedia accessibility is not boring and difficult accessibility is 
it is about building web pages that can be navigated and read by everyone regardless of the disability location experience or technology okay so up to 20% so we will not have uh, these things there are something called motor uh, uh, inaccessibility inability to use mouse uh, response time limited fine motor okay there is a simulation uh, where there is a simulation screen recorder dot html let me go to that and show you So this is where you can actually uh, uh, get, download this. Uh, I will type it here. You can download this. This is a very interesting thing. Okay, you can go. And everything like how to do this. What is the screen reader? So this is using NVDA to evaluate web accessibility. So the out reading them, everything is located here. Please go through this is a beautiful page. Okay. Show you. Uh, I will show you one video so that uh... Did you know that 20 to 25% of the population has a disability? <laughs> Why should you care? Well, that could be 25% of the population who cannot access your website, cannot find your products, services, or whatever information you're sharing online. So in today's video, I wanna show you a tool so that you can help others get the information and get the products and services that they're seeking. Hello everyone, Scott Friesen here at Simpletivity, helping you to get more done and enjoy less stress. And in today's video, we're looking at helping others to get more done. People who are looking for your products, your services, or for your information online and giving them the ability to access that information. Regardless if they have a visual impairment, maybe motor skills or cognitive disabilities, or maybe just something as simple as poor eyesight, how can they access your information easily without you having to do a lot of work? Now, I think there's two key reasons why it's important for us to talk about web Web accessibility. Number one, if your website is not ADA and WCAG compliant, you put yourself at risk at receiving lawsuits for not being accessible to other individuals. But I think the second reason is so much more important is so that everyone can enjoy the use of the web, including whatever it is that you have to offer. So how do you know if your website or websites are compliant? Well, a great place to go and check is ace.accessibility.com. And when you get here, you can just enter in the name of any website, but probably your own, because that's where you're most curious, and select get the results. What Accessibility will do is do a quick check of your website and evaluate it through the industry standards. And in the matter of 
seconds, what it will spit out is a short report telling you if you are compliant or if you are not. As we can see here on the website that I ran through the checker, it is not currently compliant. And I can go through this report and see the different areas in which it is not accessible to those with a variety of disabilities. So what do you do if your website is not compliant? Well, it's not always an easy fix. The thing is you can't just change your font or use web safe colors and instantly make it accessible to everyone. There are simply too many and various disabilities. You have to make certain changes for their needs. So instead, you can use a tool like Accessibi. Let me show you how it works. Once you sign up and install Accessibi on your website, you will have the option to have this icon appear on your web pages. By having this appear, your users can click it and now start to adjust your content, adjust the way that your website's information is displayed so that they can more easily digest and find the information that they are looking for. And Accessibi makes it really easy because it has a number of profiles ready set depending on that user's disability to change your website. But just before I show you how Accessibi is going to change your website for the better, let's take a look at a few things that we sometimes don't think about in terms of the challenges that many users experience. On this sample web page, for example, we have a carousel, which is rapidly moving here. We've got a GIF image, which can be difficult for some people. It may even trigger a seizure for those who suffer from epilepsy. We've got a number of bright colors and the font is maybe not the easiest to read. How can someone with a disability safely navigate and find the information that they are looking for? Well, by clicking on Accessibility, I can make a few changes. So let's start with the first one, seizure safe profile. Immediately, you can see that the colors have been dialed back a little bit. It's not exactly black and white, but it's a lot easier on the eyes. This GIF image, for example, has stopped moving and the carousel has as well. Again, the content is still there. It's all still clickable. It's all still accessible, but much easier and much safer for someone who suffers from epilepsy. The second one down is the visually impaired profile. So by selecting this one, you can see that now the colors are much more distinct. And I'm sure you saw that the text, the font itself, not only became a lot larger, but became much easier to read. As I scan down through this web page now, there's a much sharper contrast between the images and the text is that much easier for me to read. Now I'm sure some of you may be asking, how does someone with a disability identify this and for the help in that, the here has become a universal symbol for web accessibility. For those who use a screen reader or those who perhaps need to navigate by keyboard alone are used to and becoming more custom to finding this on the web. So if you have this on your website, there's a good chance that they're going to find it immediately because it never goes away. It's going to be floating in either the bottom left or right hand corner. But for someone who is blind or visually impaired and needs a screen reader, no problem. By having Accessibility installed on your website, the screen reader will alert the visitor that this is an additional option to make their navigation so much easier. Let's take a look at a quick example. So when I first visit this website with my screen reader, press Alt plus one for screen reader mode. Stop this message with Alt plus zero. It's letting me know Alert. that there's some enhanced functionality just for me. If I press Alt plus one, screen reader mode is on. Alt plus zero to cancel. Button. Heading three. A good looking, comfortable traditional collection. Heading three. List item. Woman in gray denim jeans. Woman in black tank top with black tattoo on arm. List item. What Accessibility is doing is enhancing my picture tags, my image tags, so that people who are wanting to view that information can see it. Even if they can't view it with their own eyes, they can access it with their screen reader with the help of Accessibility. Now keep in mind that even though Accessibility has these six different profiles at the beginning of its menu, if you scroll down, you've got so much more available to you. So for example, a user could simply click the 
readable font and just change the text, the font on the page here. Maybe you want to be able to align all the text on the page to the right-hand side. So that's easier for the way that you like to read. If we go down a little bit further, we can choose a higher contrast, which if I close this down for a second, here you can see it's a much higher contrast between the lights and the darks. And for those who may suffer from color blindness, again, color blindness is different for different color blind people. So what is the proper text color depending on your color blindness? Now, as we continue down the accessibility interface, we come to orientation adjustments. And again, the user can tweak this and make adjustments depending on their needs. Here's one, for example, is hide images. So if you just want to be able to focus in on the text and not be distracted by videos, GIFs, and other images, you can turn that off as well. There's also the option to increase the size of your cursor. Maybe I want a big black cursor, which is going to help me navigate and follow along where I am and make sure I know what I'm clicking on and where it is. Another feature that I find most helpful is where are the actual links? So here under content adjustments, I can select highlight links. Now this is going to tell me what is clickable and what is not. You can see the little orange around these buttons here. I can see that there's orange around these images. I can clearly see what is clickable and what is not as I scour and as I browse this website. So if you want to make sure that your website is accessible to all, be sure to check out Accessibi at accessibi.com. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you subscribe right here to the Simpletivity channel. And remember, being productive does not need to be difficult. In fact, huh. it's very simple. Huh. Huh. For just 60 seconds. Huh. Hey guys, it's Taylor. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at five amazing websites for some cool design inspiration. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first up is Photo Homes. This is a better way to build homes. They're kind of taking the home building process from design to completion in one easy process. They're going to do pretty much everything here, streamlining the home building process. And I really love the way they've done this hero section. All of the parts coming together and establishing that building uh, heading there and then it gives you a real world example sliding up to that animated image right under that hero they've got some real world examples of their homes and it zooms in to one of them here to take you down through the next section which is going to go over why their houses are the smartest on the block and they've got some nice tabs that you can go through and look at the different parts of the house it's going to highlight it in orange which i think is really cool this is a great 3d way of showing you everything their houses are capable of They've got an app that's gonna help you with your process of building your house. And then if we keep scrolling, they've got this awesome slider section where you can select each one and it just kind of slides through. I love this interaction. They've got really clean, really nice looking. And then down here after this video section, they've got a nice big block of orange for their call to action, which is really great, stands out, gets your attention. And then when you hover over Talk to Us, it kind of compacts into that circle. Really great interaction and overall a really solid website. Check it out, link is down in the description. And since today's video is all about inspiration, what better way to get inspired than using a mood board or jotting down your ideas and staying organized? Which brings us to today's sponsor, Milanote. Milanote is a bit different than traditional software. It's more like working on a wall in a creative studio. It allows you to map out your projects, gather and organize all of your inspiration in one convenient place, and it also allows you to collaborate with your colleagues or clients in real time. As a full stack designer, it's an essential part of my workflow, and this awesome tool is free, so check out the link at the top of the description. This next one is Timeframe, a social networking app that's gonna show not only the past and the present, but the future, allowing you to access other people's calendars and see what they have planned and up and coming. 
And this homepage is not only beautiful, it has these nice calendar blocks in the background, but the entire thing is one gigantic scroll interaction. So as I scroll, the website has a lot of motion, all of the images compact into the app, and we go into the common layout that you're gonna see throughout the entire thing where we have our kind of content on the right, and then we'll have some headings showcasing the features here on the side as the phone changes all the way throughout the scroll with the colors in the background and that calendar scrolling through. So just a really cool way to showcase what is possible with scroll interactions on your website. At the end, it kind of unpacks here and returns to a similar layout as the hero, kind of telling that story from the start to the end. I really like this website. It's really cool and creative. A great way to showcase an app. And it's also made with Webflow, which is super cool. This next one is from Procreate. They're gonna release a mobile app. And so this is the coming soon page for it. It's a very small website, only two sections, the hero and then this next footer and call to action kind of combo in one. Uh, but it's just a really awesome interaction. So as I scroll and I get to kind of the point right here, it's gonna change to dark theme. And that gradient runs through the image and the text really quick there and then it gives us the opportunity to put in our email address. So this is a really cool interaction, how you can transition through a light theme design to dark theme for a different section. Instead of having your typical blocks of content where you would have a black block with your text and then you'd have a white block up here, you can seamlessly fade through each one of those. And you can also do that with color sections on different websites as well. So just something cool to think about, fading your section colors and text from one color to the next instead of having those standard blocks. So that's a great website. Link is down in the description. So I picked this next one because of the detailed interactions and hover effects they've got going on. It's a lot on this website. Uh, check out this preloader. So my, my cursor is actually the loading bar, I guess. So they have it in the center here, but uh, it's also showing the numbers in the cursor as well as that compass in the center of the screen. So that was kind of cool and playful for while the website's loading. Uh, but I really like the aesthetic of this. This is the Alienist Angels of Darkness. I've never heard of that. I assume it's a TV show because it says watch episodes up here. Uh, but they've got this nice kind of grungy washed out image with a little bit of color in there. But check out this custom cursor they have with this nice blend mode over everything. The text disappears in the background even. And it's just got this really nice kind of purplish blue and red uh, tint to it, which is really awesome and it stands out. And then as you scroll down, each one of those transition effects, that's super cool to look at. They also have that on the menu as well. Uh, so a really nice looking menu, very modern. And when you select something, that red kind of washes out like that. They also had this really nice kind of map section where you can check out the different locations in New York. Uh, so you can click on each one of these and it's got this nice card that tells you a little bit about it. I love the style of this section with the line work they've done here. And it really looks good with the font selection. And then they've got the cursor doing this black and white kind of hover over the image there. That's really nice. Our son Vihan, he's good at studies. But one thing that he always struggled with was speaking fluently in English at home. And like I said, there's a lot of detailed interactions to this website. Uh, so you could spend a lot of time looking at this and getting inspiration from it. Super cool. All the layout is really nicely done. I'm really impressed with this website. And I think I'm going to draw a lot of inspiration from this personally. So the link for this will be down in the description. The last website I wanted to show you is Milkshake Studios end of year review here. Uh, so Milkshake Studio, here they are. This is their main page. They build brands, launch products, and create experiences. Uh, but they created this uh, 2020 uh, review, and it's just a really cool layout, a lot of cool, fun interactions I wanted to show you guys. Uh, so right here on the hero, you can click and drag these numbers around and kind of they got some physics on there. That's really sick. Uh, so if you scroll down, a lot of big, bold fonts and numbers. I really like how this one kind of sticks to the bottom. And then as you scroll, it swaps to an outline for the text to slide over it. And then they've got a bunch of their different details. Uh, they just kind of stack these back and forth. So they've got these big numbers and you hover over them. It gives you a different custom animation for your cursor, which is cool. Um, just a nice way to show all their numbers throughout the year. So really creative and bold and kind of fun layout they've got going so far. 
But one of the main reasons I want to showcase this was the way they do their case studies. So they've got their uh, easy buttons here. You can view the case study or see it live. And they give you a nice bold title of what it is, but it's going to change to an outline. And as that changes, it's going to have the images slide up here and kind of float through the screen and then move on to the next one. So I don't think I've seen an interaction like this before. I think this one is uh, the first time I've seen something like this. So this is super interesting to look at. And I really love the way they've done this. Uh, just a nice way to break up the norm of just showing a bunch of images and having a button to go view the case study and see it live. Uh, just really creative stuff here. Uh, so that's kind of it for the main reason I wanted to showcase uh, this website. Uh, the wrap it up here with a little bit of the year. You can click on each one of these and see a little bit more about it. And then it's just their call to action. So uh, that's going to do it for that website. I really love the interactions, really playful, creative. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Those are five websites that I think you guys should be looking at for inspiration here in the start of 2021. If you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you give it a like. Subscribe yeah. for more. So uh, this is with... Uh the inspirational websites and how to make the website accessible. Uh, from my side, uh, I have completed, let me have some kind of interaction because we should not spend at least 10-15 minutes for interaction. Please let us know if you have any questions.